So, for example, we have said that it is no longer a restriction on you. As companies to invest in helping to build internet and broadband infrastructure inside of Cuba. It is not against US law. as it's been interpreted by the administration. If we start seeing those kinds of commercial deals taking place, and Cubans are benefiting from greater access to the Internet, And when I go to the entrepreneurship meeting later this afternoon, I understand that we're going to meet some young Cubans who are already getting trained and are facile in using the internet. They're interested in startups that builds a constituency for ending the embargo. If we build on the work that we're doing in agriculture, and you start seeing more you. As farmers interacting with Cuban farmers, and there's more exports and imports. That builds a constituency and the possibility of ending the embargo increases. So hopefully taking advantage of what we've already done will help. And the second area, which we've already discussed extensively, is the issue of human rights. People are still concerned about that inside of Cuba. Now, keep in mind I've got fierce disagreements with the Chinese around human rights. I'll be going to Vietnam later this year I have deep disagreements with them as well. When we first visited Burma, people questioned whether we should be. Traveling there because of long-standing human rights violations in our view. And the approach that I've taken has been that if I engage frankly, clearly. Stating what our beliefs are but also being clear that we can't force change on any particular.
country ultimately it has to come from within then that is going to be a more useful. Strategy than the same kinds of rigid disengagement that for 50 years did nothing. I guess ultimately what this comes down to, Andrea, is I have faith in people. I think that if you meet Cubans here and Cubans meet Americans. And they're meeting and talking and interacting and doing business together. And going to school together and learning from each other then they'll recognize people are people. And in that context, I believe that change will occur. Okay, now I'm done. But Senor Presidente, I think Andrea had a question for you just about your vision. It's up to you. He did say he was only going to take one question and I was going to take two. But I leave it up to you if you want to address that question. Question, poor favor. President Obama, Andrea, she's one of our most esteemed journalists in America. And I'm sure she'd appreciate just a short, brief answer. President Raul Castro, Andrea. Question, Mr. President. President Raul Castro, as interpreted. There is a program here to be fulfilled. I know that if I stay here, you will ask 500 questions. I said that I was going to answer one. Well. I answered one and a half. President Obama has already helped me out with the answer here, Andrea.
I was reading something about human rights, but I'm going to make the question to you now. There are 61 international instruments recognized. How many countries in the world comply with all the human rights and civil rights that have been? Included in these 61 instruments. What country complies with them all? Do you know how many? I do. None. None, whatsoever. Some countries comply some rights, others comply others. And we are among these countries. Out of these 61 instruments. Cuba has complied with 47 of these human rights instruments. There are countries that may comply with more, there's those that comply with less. I think the human rights issue should not be politicized. That is not correct. That is a purpose that will stay the same way. For example, for Cuba, the desire for all the rights. Do you think there's any more sacred right than the right to health? So that billions of children don't die just for the lack of a vaccine or a drug or a medicament. Do you agree with the right to free education for all those born anywhere in the world or in any country? I think many countries don't think this is a human right. In Cuba, all children are born in a hospital and they are registered that same day. Because when mothers are in advanced pregnancy they go to hospitals days before. Many days before delivery, so that all children are born in hospitals. It doesn't matter if they live in faraway places or in mountains or hills.
we have many other rights a right to health, the right to education. And this is my last example that I will mention. Do you think that for equal work, men get better paid than women just for the fact of being women? Well, in Cuba, women get the same pay for same work. I can give you many. Many examples. I don't think we can use the argument of human rights for political confrontation. That is not fair. It's not correct. I'm not saying that it's not honest. It's part of confrontations, of course. But let us work so that we can all comply with all human rights. It's like talking about pride I'm going to end here because it's a commitment that we should end in time. It's not correct to ask me about political prisoners in general. Please give me the name of a political prisoner. And I think this is enough. We have concluded. Thank you for your participation. Barack Obama Joint Session of Congress Speech on the Economy and Job Creation Delivered September 8, 2011, Washington, D. MR Speaker, Mr. Vice President, Members of Congress, and Fellow Americans Tonight we meet at an urgent time for our country. We continue to face an economic crisis that has left millions of our neighbors jobless. and a political crisis that's made things worse. This past week, reporters have been asking, 
What will this speech mean for the president? What will it mean for Congress? How will it affect their polls, and the next election? But the millions of Americans who are watching right now, they don't care about politics. They have real life concerns. Many have spent months looking for work. Others are doing their best just to scrape by giving up nights out with the family to save on gas or make the mortgage. Postponing retirement to send a kid to college. These men and women grew up with faith in an America where hard work and responsibility paid off. They believed in a country where everyone gets a fair shake and does their fair share where if you stepped up. Did your job, and were loyal to your company. That loyalty would be rewarded with a decent salary and good benefits, maybe a raise once in a while. If you did the right thing, you could make it. Anybody could make it in America. For decades now, Americans have watched that compact erode. They have seen the decks too often stacked against them. And they know that Washington has not always put their interests first. The people of this country work hard to meet their responsibilities. The question tonight is whether we'll meet ours. The question is whether, in the face of an ongoing national crisis, We can stop the political circus and actually do something to help the economy. The question is the question is whether we can restore some of the fairness and security that has defined this nation since our beginning.
Those of us here tonight can't solve all our nation's woes. Ultimately, our recovery will be driven not by Washington, but by our businesses and our workers. But. We can help. We can make a difference. There are steps we can take right now to improve people's lives. I am sending this Congress a plan that you should pass right away. It's called the American Jobs Act. There should be nothing controversial about this piece of legislation. Everything in here is the kind of proposal that's been supported by both Democrats and Republicans including many who sit here tonight. And everything in this bill will be paid for. Everything. The purpose of the American Jobs Act is simple. To put more people back to work and more money in the pockets of those who are working. It will create more jobs for construction workers, more jobs for teachers. More jobs for veterans, and more jobs for long-term unemployed. It will provide it will provide a tax break for companies who hire new workers. And it will cut payroll taxes in half for every working American and every small business. It will provide a jolt to an economy that has stalled, and give companies confidence that if they invest and if they hire. There will be customers for their products and services. You should pass this jobs plan right away. Everyone here knows that small businesses are where most new jobs begin. And you know that while corporate profits have come roaring back, Smaller companies haven't. So for everyone who speaks so passionately about making life easier for job creators, this plan is for you.